This is my DA52V Suzuki Everyvan. It has a single overhead cam, turbocharged F6A engine attached to an automatic transmission. Max speed is about 130 kilometers an hour at 7,000 RPM downhill with a tailwind. The top speed's actually fine for me, but I'd like to lower the RPM for better cruising. To achieve this, I'll be installing the axle from a DA32W Suzuki Every Plus, AKA an Every Landy. These are basically the non-K version of the same chassis as my van and came with a bigger engine, transmission, and rear diff. It also had bigger brakes. I fitted the bigger front brakes in a previous video and the link will be in the description. The one thing that I'm worried about with this is that the higher final gear will take away from acceleration in the lower gears. As I couldn't find any information online what this will be like, I'll just do it and then we can all see. I'll also be swapping this van to manual in the future, but for science we're going to do it in these steps. Step one, record how the car performs stock. Step two, install the DA32W axle. Step three, test drive it. Step four, manual swap it. Step five, test drive and compare the results. In this video, we'll aim to complete step two. Penetrating oil for lubrication. Get some gigs. Now it's just a matter of poking and prodding shit until it all lets go. The cable's down in here. I need to rotate this pin here there to get that out. That's one. Pyong! Launch it to the Korea. If you're not planning on reusing any of this, you can just cut the springs off, but I'm far too cheap for that. Kieran can confirm that you just wiggle the f out of it and it lets go. Oh yeah, you just get frustrated and shake shit and then yeah, it falls apart. There we go. Handbrake cable that we want is under here. So we get that out of there, done. Look how thin it is. I hate these two. It's got this sleeve that goes through the hole, and then once it goes through the hole, all of the arms expand. You have to clamp on all of the arms to be able to push it back through the hole. The person that invented these... Is now roasting in a special layer oh, of hell. Yeah, absolutely. To be fair, it won't come out, but it won't f***ing come out. Simply remove the handbrake cable. Three hours later. 10 mil, undo it, done. There you go, and then wiggle the shit out of it, and it leaks all over his driveway, so you put that straight back in there. Use some needle nose pliers from the back, and then squeeze the, the pin oh, yeah. on the side, and you just pull it, pull it out. While I'm here, I'm going to attempt to undo this. Goodbye, bump stops. Note how wet this is. Yep, and the back side of it's soaked too. I believe that the uh, diff seal is completely rooted. That diff oil made that easy. Yeah. Yeah, that flows pretty pretty smoothly, really. I don't know, it's because it's full of diff oil. Look how wet and horrible these are. That was never going to stop the car. There we go. I could just cut them in here. Because that's what I'm going to do. I'm cutting them. Why? Uh, you have to, because if you don't, the lowered springs just sit uh. on them. You have to cut them. Done. Never good. What I want to do is put something on the ground that this can just fall on, and then I don't need to worry about it. Don't lift it too much further. Or that's it. That's all I wanted. Ooh. Now I've just got these boys. One, and two. A lot of the time, I just go with the footage that I've got. Like, oh, that, that shot's not perfect. Well, there's nothing I can do about it now, is there? You put the bolts back in. Yeah. Oh, it's hub centric, that's why. I forgot about that. There's a cutout in this, an indent, and there's a, like a part that sticks out on this one. Uh, and they sit into each other. Look at the difference in panard rod. Holy shit. And the length is different too. The bend in it. Yeah. Now, today on things we should have done before we even started. How big is this thing? I'm gonna say 125, yeah? And I've got the same, 125. The length is the same. This 
area here is completely different on the OEM to the DA32. So that is causing a bit of a thing. Okay, up here we've got Alto Works C chassis adjustable panard rod. We have first gen DA52V every van, and here we have DA32W every landy. And then we should probably show you this. If we go out to the silver, which I believe is second gen, it is a bit difficult to see, but the panard rod in here is different again. So that's three different panard rods. Let's call it 97. Let's go have a look at the other one. Okay. You're 110. It's 13 bad. centimeters different, you're right. And the panard rod's 13 centimeters different. So they moved the mount 13 centimeters this way and then used a shorter rod. We've got calipers here to make things scientific and shit. Wedge that in there as rough as we can. And that's the same. And that's the same. Let's have a look at the other end. This is where shit gets sketchy. OEM is that. Alto's the same. This is much bigger. The Alto's adjustable, but is it a step up? Because it's the same thickness as this. What do you think? I think we need to use the beefy one for two reasons. One probably has a curve in it for a reason. I don't think the straight ones are gonna clear the diff, will they? All right, well, that sorted that out. There's only one that'll fit. We need to massage this side significantly. Yeah, I need to figure out how I'm gonna do that. Okay, so Kieran's idea is to feed threaded rod through with a washer and then a nut and then, and another then another. a nut and then a washer. Well, this is working really, really well, dude. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> just gonna, just. I like how we're intentionally bending that because what most people do is um, stick their cool new eBay part on it, do it up with an air gun and then wonder why everything's bent now. Well, they just, they do it up and then they walk away. And that's just not an option here because nothing fits. <laughs> nothing ever fits, Karen. Yeah, where are the calipers hiding? There they are. It's only 35. <laughs> 55. <laughs> what is it? I don't know how to read these calipers. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Hang on, so that's zero. To be fair, like for your job, how often do you use tools? Um, you mean ones that aren't digital? Never. Yeah. How many times have you measured that now? <laughs> this is the third. Okay, so the total is 43.5 mil. At the fattest point. I'm pretty sure I'm the fattest point of this operation. You're too big for the calipers, bro. Yeah. So we're close, but no cigar. Bending shit. How do you bend shit? Let's give that a f hit with a hammer. You want the real hammer? This hammer says, what do you mean real hammer? I'm not a puppet, I'm a real boy. Oh, I'm sh this is shocking. <laughs> okay, I need a real hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that real hammer. <laughs> oh. I wonder if that's gonna fit now. <laughs> a lot easier than it did before. It's getting closer. Oh, that's skin off. Oh, Oof, on there, that's nice. On a scale of one to, oh my f***ing god, what are you doing? I'd say this is probably a four. I'm going to hold this with a hammer. <laughs> but I'm going to put the camera in front of my face. Don't use goggles. Use a GoPro. <laughs> Looks like that in there. Okay. Lucky for me, the standard springs fit. We did manage to get that in, but we had to bend the crap out of it. It wasn't easy to do. I found some square pieces of metal, stood them on the jack, and then used this big C-clamp to pull them into place, and that stretched the walls out. I'm gonna put the diff up, put the shocks back on. Shock number one. Shock number two is in. Lower the jack down. There we go. And we don't need that anymore. Now we find out that the propeller shaft doesn't fit. Or a luck, because it does. Driver of screws, there we go. Get that bitch out of there. All right, take that out. Get this one out. Put this one back in.
Done. Okay. Connect up the ABS sensor. I actually checked online and this is the same part number, so this will work just fine. Why am I not using the one that was there? Because I don't know if it works. Honestly, I don't know if this one works either, but just figure I'd rather stick with this one. Get out of there, right. Perfect. All the holes for the ABS line is the same as well, so that's done. Two removed. Connect up these here. One, two. Right, that's done. So next up is uh, handbrake cables. That's all we got left. Look at the difference in shoe size. This one fits inside the other one. This definitely looks easier to work on, though this, this is a serious spring. I'm thinking I would rather play with the other end brake cable than try and manipulate this, to be honest. My decision to keep the cables attached to the brakes I think was a good one because this is only two bolts to get this out. Doing it at the shoes I think will be much more difficult. This is just this. I honestly don't think it's going to be that difficult at all. Of course, I mean famous last words, but... Hey, alright. Hey, I got that too. Holy crap. Get that out of there. Get this cable out. And this cable through. Plug that in there. Geez, I'm glad that goes in. Got it. This is why you need ratchet spanners, kids. I can't even grab hold of that. Lower the fuel tank just to change out a handbrake cable. I don't recommend this. There's just too many pieces. The brackets flopping around everywhere. Not a single part of this has been easy. It'd be good if I could film it, but I mean, tripod's too big. I've got a wire running across my face because it has to be plugged in. You know what? I just can't. I've got to get it done. Because I've got to drive, I've got to just, I've got to finish a car and drive it. I can't, I can't afford to be showing you. After levels of drama that I never want to talk about again, it is done. As you can see, I've got the handbrake cables all connected. Got this shroud back in. This cable runs along there and there's two mounting points in behind the fuel tank. In the end, I just lowered the fuel tank down onto the jack and then I was able to get my hand in between the tank and the body. See how this bolt has got a tab on the top that goes into a hole in the body? Note that the furthest one in on the other side, if you put the tab in a hole and you're trying to put the screw in, there's no hole for the screw because you got your tab in the screw hole. Not having a good time. You have to take this out. I've done videos on how to do that before a thousand times, so I didn't bother showing you. And I didn't have to take any of this out. I just undid the adjustment nuts, which I'll do back up now. Oh yeah, that's good. Here we are putting it down on the landy diff the first time. And we're down. So just move the van over there. The wild thing about that is that I still don't have any brakes. Press the foot brake to get the automatic uh, transmission to disengage and then just drive pulling the handbrake up. 